Welcome back to AP Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video, we're going to be looking at a special type of stoichiometry problem called combustion analysis. Now, in these problems, we're going to use reaction stoichiometry, moles, the empirical formula uh, analysis that we learned in the last video. We're going to put it all together, and we're going to figure out the formula of a compound. This is what I tend to call the granddaddy of stoichiometry problems because we get to use pretty much everything that we have ever learned about stoichiometry to figure out how to solve these problems. Now, when we talk about combustion, we need to remember that combustion is a very specific type of problem. Okay, it's a very specific type of reaction. When you have a hydrocarbon and it's undergoing complete combustion, it means that you're taking that hydrocarbon it's reacted with oxygen, and you're producing carbon dioxide and water, very specifically, when it undergoes complete combustion like that. Some of these problems may have uh, the type of hydrocarbon where there's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The reaction works the same way, though. You still make carbon dioxide and water. Now, let's see how these combustion analysis problems work. They're very involved. They're kind of long. But if you have a good basis and foundation in stoichiometry, like I'm hoping you all do, then you won't have much problem with these. Let's try this particular problem. We have a hydrocarbon that contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and it's burned completely in a, in a controlled combustion chamber. It says a 4.1 gram sample of this hydrocarbon is burned, and after the experiment, 5.41 grams of water are collected, along with 8.80 grams of carbon dioxide. Determine the empirical formula of the hydrocarbon. Now, let's think about our strategy here. Okay, this is one of those hydrocarbons that has CH and O. And so this is the basic uh, format of the equation here. Let's think about what's going on. Okay, the problem tells us precisely how much carbon dioxide was produced. 8.80 grams. Well, it's interesting that if we figure out how many grams of carbon are in that 8.80 grams of carbon dioxide, we're going to know exactly how many grams of carbon were in the hydrocarbon to start with. Because you see, the only source of carbon in, in, on the product side of this reaction is, is right here. Okay, so we can follow that carbon and then backtrack and use that for our empirical formula. And guess what? We can do the same thing for water. We know that precisely 5.41 grams of water are collected. And guess where all the hydrogen came from that's in that water? Well, right from that, that hydrocarbon. So if we can figure how many grams of hydrogen are in the water, then, we can then we'll, we'll basically know how many grams of hydrogen were in the hydrocarbon. So let's do both of those. Let's start with the, uh, let's see here, we're going to start with the uh, water. Let's find out how many grams of hydrogen are in the water. So here's the problem again. And we're going to start with the 5.41 grams of water. And once again, our goal is to determine how many grams of hydrogen are in that. So this sounds like our typical three-step process kind of problem that we learned in the last lesson, back in lesson six. By the way, if you haven't watched that video yet, you need to do that. Um, and it's on my YouTube channel here. So let's start by converting to moles. That is step one, right? Convert to moles. So we're going to put one mole on top. And it looks like about 18 grams of water on the bottom. And grams are out, top and bottom. Step two is the mole ratio. So that means we're going to put water on the bottom and hydrogen on the top. Now, in this one, we have to look at the subscripts. How many hydrogens are in a water molecule? Hopefully you can see that there are two hydrogens in every one water molecule. The little subscript of two tells us that, doesn't it? So it's a two to one. Water's out, top and bottom. We want to find how many grams of water there are. We're in moles of hydrogen. And I think I said water, we need to find grams of hydrogen rather. So in the next conversion factor, we're going to put grams on top, moles on bottom. And we're talking about hydrogen, so that's why it's 1.01. .01. Moles are out, and now we can multiply and divide, 
and we find that there are 0 0.607 grams of hydrogen here. Now, let's do the same thing for our carbon dioxide. We're going to take that 8.80 grams of carbon dioxide, and this time we're going to find out how many grams of carbon are in that. So in our first step, we're going to put one mole on top, you know, convert to moles, and then grams of carbon dioxide on bottom, and I believe that's about 44.0 when you add those up on the periodic table. Grams are out. Step two is the mole ratio. So we're trying to figure out carbon, so carbon goes on top and carbon dioxide goes on the bottom. This is a one-to-one -one mole ratio that we have here. CO2's out. We're now in moles of carbon. We want to find out how many grams of carbon, though. So that's our next step, convert to grams. So grams on top, one mole on bottom. And of course, this is carbon we're talking about, so that's 12.0 grams in a mole. Moles are out. We can multiply and divide, and we find that we're talking about 2.40 grams of carbon. Now, it says here that the hydrocarbon contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We've just figured out how many grams of hydrogen there are in it. We figured out how many grams of carbon are in that. How can we determine the grams of oxygen? Well, hopefully you realize that it's actually easier than what we've just done. It's just simple subtraction. We know that the total mass of the hydrocarbon is 4.61 grams, as we see here. So if we subtract the 4.61 grams of the total hydrocarbon minus grams of carbon that we just calculated minus the grams of hydrogen that we just calculated, we can find the mass of oxygen, and it's 1.603 grams of oxygen. Now, we're going to take these values and we're going to use those to determine the empirical formula, just like we did in the previous video. So I'm going to set these numbers up here. I've got them copied again. 2.40, 0 0.607 grams, and 1.603 grams of CH and O. And we're going to go through our process for finding the empirical formula, just like we did before. Now the first step is convert to moles. So we're going to do that for all three of these. For carbon, we know we're going to have to use 12 grams in a mole and get 0 0.200 moles once we divide that. For hydrogen, we're going to have one mole over 1.01 grams, the atomic mass of hydrogen. And when you divide that, it's about 0.601 moles. For oxygen, it's one mole over 16.0 grams. And that's about 0 0.100 moles. Now, what's the next step? Divide all three of these by the smallest, right? So the smallest is which one? It's 0.1 mole. So we're going to divide them all by that number, and we get 2, 6.01, very, very close to 6, and of course, 1. So guess what? Those are the subscripts, C2H6O. That is the empirical formula of this one. Let's try another problem. Let's say that we have a hydrocarbon containing carbon and hydrogen. It's burned completely in a combustion chamber. A 0.451 gram sample of the hydrocarbon is burned. And after the experiment, 0.811 grams of water are collected, along with 1.32 grams of carbon dioxide. The hydrocarbon is also determined to have a molecular mass of 30.0 AMU. Determine both the empirical and molecular formulas of the hydrocarbon. Well, we're going to do the same thing as we did before. We're going to remember that in this case, you know, we have 0.811 grams of water. Let's figure out how many grams of hydrogen are in that. So, you know, we'll start with the water here. In the first one, we're going to put one mole over about 18 grams as we convert to grams as our first step cancel. Second step is convert to moles. So in that one, we're going to put hydrogen on top because that's what we want to find out. Water on the bottom because it's being canceled out. 
and it's two hydrogens for every one water, and water goes out. We're interested in the mass of hydrogen, so we're going to convert to grams, so grams on top, one mole on bottom, that's the atomic mass of hydrogen, moles cancel, and when we multiply and divide, we find that the mass of, of hydrogen is 0.0910 grams of hydrogen. Let's do the same thing for grams of carbon dioxide and determine grams of carbon in that. So once again, in our first step, we convert to moles. All roads lead to moles, so one mole on top and 44 grams of carbon dioxide, so grams go out. Step two is the mole ratio. So carbon on top, carbon dioxide on bottom, there is one carbon atom for every one molecule of carbon dioxide. CO2 goes out. We want to find mass, and so that means in our last conversion factor, grams goes on top, one mole on bottom, and of course this is carbon, so it's about 12 grams. Cancel moles. When you multiply and divide, it's 0 0.360 grams of carbon. Now notice, this, hydro, this particular hydrocarbon has carbon and, hydro, and hydrogen. It doesn't have oxygen, so we don't have to worry about that subtraction step like we did in the last problem. In fact, you might find it kind of interesting that if you take the grams of hydrogen we have right here, 0.0910, and add that to the grams of carbon, 0 0.360, they add up to very, very close to the 0.51 grams that we got here. So that's not a coincidence. You know, that's because that's how the stoichiometry works. Let's try the next step here, because we have the gram values. Now we're ready to find the empirical formula. So I'm going to take these numbers, and we're going to do our, our first step of the empirical formula part of this, which is convert it to moles. All right, so in this one, we're going to use 12 grams per mole. You divide it and get 0 0.03 moles. For the hydrogen, we use the 1.01 .01 grams in a mole. Divide that and get about 0 0.0901 moles. Now, we're going to divide each of these mole values by the smallest, right? So we divide them both by 0 0.03, and the carbon is a 1, and the hydrogen is a 3. So that means our empirical formula here is CH3. So that's what we had to do. A lot of work here. We had to do our three-step process. We had to know about converting the moles. We had to know about mole ratios. We had to know about empirical formulas. Uh, that's why they really like to ask these problems on the AP exam in some form or fashion. Now, we're not done. Because the problem says find the molecular formula as well. Here's the last line. It has a molecular mass of 30. Determine also the molecular formula. We've already got the empirical. We need the molecular formula now. Well, do you remember how that went from the last video? We have to find the mass of that empirical formula. So CH3, you add the 12 and then three hydrogens, that's 15 AMU. Well, we have to take the 30, the molecular mass, and divide it by 15. So take the molecular mass, divide it by the empirical formula's mass, and you'll get that multiplier. So 30 divided by 15 is 2. That means, in this case, we have to multiply the empirical formula by 2. And so we find that the molecular formula is C2 h6. So combustion analysis problems. Lots of good chemistry. The problems are kind of long, but if you have a good basis in stoichiometry and follow the instructions that I showed you in this video and in the last video as well, you shouldn't have any problems with these, uh, with these problems. I, I, I certainly hope that you enjoyed the video, and at the very least, you learned something. If you learned something from my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already uh, smashed that subscribe button, please do so. Don't forget to ring that bell so that you are uh, notified of all of my uh, upcoming AP Chemistry videos. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry together.